So let's change it. Let's um, in ABC development, let's add build and hit submit. And then when we go back to ABC development, you can see that build is now in there. So let's remove plan and hit submit. And when we go back to ABC development, you can see that plan is unselected. And if we look at the SharePoint list, we can see that our, our combo box here, this is actually a combo box of, of choices, it's close and build. Hey everyone, this is my SharePoint questions and I am Andrew Hess. So you may have noticed I did get a new mic, so hopefully my videos will have a better sound quality. But if you're new here, please like, subscribe. I appreciate it. Uh, today, what I'm going to do is I'm going to answer someone's question that they gave me on a previous video. They wanted to have a combo box, but they wanted it to be filled out by checkboxes. I believe that was their question. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna be in my project list here and I'm gonna create a, a choice field. And I'm not sure what I'm going to call it yet, but it's gonna be a choice field and it's gonna be multi-select. So I'm just gonna make something up for demonstration purposes. Uh, I really can't think of a reason why I wanna do this right now, but maybe um, we can do, uh, how about life cycle? And so we'll have uh, plan, build, run, and close. And so it's multi-select, right? We can click through each one of these. Um, that's my idea. There'll be no default. So I, I created this in SharePoint. The field is called, or the column is called life cycle. All right, so I'm gonna go back to Power Apps. I'm going to refresh my data source. So my project list. Um, this is a, a previous project I've been working on, so if you're not caught up, um, this is just a project management uh, power app that I've been working on. But right up here, we can create a new project, and we're gonna keep this field in the regular projects. I believe it's in both. But I'm going to add it to this form here. So edit fields, add fields, and it's called life cycle. Right, and so right now, we have a multi-select uh, field. And if we look at that field and look in behind the scenes, we notice that the items are choices, project list life cycle, but a lot of people don't look here, but if you click in the white space in the card, you'll see that the update is actually data card value 18 dot selected items. So let's change that, okay? The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to delete this entire combo box. All right. So I'm going to unlock the card and I'm going to delete the combo box. I'm going to give myself a lot more space. So probably maybe the whole entire um, bottom part. But we're going to put in some check boxes. And these check boxes are going to match our options in our choice field. All right, so our options were plan, build, run, and close. So we're gonna save all of these um, options here in one combo box. So if you notice, I, I do have some red um, X's here. You know, this is just saying, hey, you know, we don't know the Y value. I'm just gonna make that blank for now to get rid of that. And this one also does not understand the update property. So for each one of these check boxes, what I'm going to do is I'm either going to collect or uncollect based on what is checked. So for the first check box on plan, what I'm going to do is I'm going to say on the on check property, on the on check property, what I'm going to do is say collect, oh, let me type in here, right? Collect. Um, collection, we'll call it life cycle. Collect plan. I'm going to do this straight down for build on the on check property. I'm going to say collect build. We're going to say run. And on the close, on the on check property, we're going to say close. Okay, 
So now on the unchecked property, so now on the checkbox on the unchecked property, what I'm going to say is remove if uh, the collection lifecycle, the value equals plan. So the reason I'm saying value is because that's the automatic uh, title of the column in a collection. So remove if on the build uncheck, remove if the value is equal to build. And then straight on down, run and close. Okay, so right now, as we select things, we can um, check this out. Let's say do plan and run. Collection lifecycle, we have plan and run. Uh, let's remove run. All right, we removed run. Then we just have plan. Another way to view this would actually be to add a, let's say, if we added a, a list box, let's add a list box in here just, just to view what we want to see. So the list box is going to show us the collection lifecycle value. So we can see as we select them that we collect each one. And as we remove one, it removes it from the collection. Okay, so we now have a collection of our checkboxes. So on the update property of the card, right now mine is blank, let's say it is collection lifecycle. All right, so let, let's try it from there. I know there's more we can do after this, but let's go ahead and try this. So I'm gonna go back, I'm gonna create a new project. Um, I, T, Y, and we'll just call it um, life cycle. All right, so let's um, add build and run. So we have two items selected. Let's hit submit. So that is gonna submit form. We do have a new project. Let's check out SharePoint first. In SharePoint, in our combo box, we do have build and run. Check that out. So we've now turned checkboxes into a multi-select choice field. Now, when I went back in here, some of the fields that I, I put in here are, are filled in, but not the life cycle, right? Now, initiate in green, I did have those fields um, default to that. So that's why they showed up. But you can see the project lead was me, the 100 work and 100 actual work in the title. So now let's work on the default of these properties, of these checkboxes. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually remove this list box. I no longer want the list box. That was just for demonstration purposes to show you what's in the collection. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to concatenate my selection. So label, um, what I'm gonna say is this item, no, I'm gonna say concat, this item dot life cycle, uh, the value and a comma. All right, so I've now converted the build run of this item in here. So if we were to come back in here and resave and do three of them and submit, you can see that in this item, I have plan run close. So now what I want to do is I want to find, or I guess search in this text field, if one of those exists. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say um, label and I'm going to say find and it's saying find text. So find plan within label 15 dot text. So it produced a number for us. So let's say if plan was blank, there would be no number. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say for the default of this is if the find, let's say this, the find of plan is equal to blank, then false, else it's true. And we may have to do an is blank. So if 
is blank, find a plan, then false true. All right, so it's it's not blank. So I, I feel like we're, we're getting somewhere. So I'm going to do this straight down. I'm going to do this for the default of build. And I'm going to do it for the default of run and do it for the default of close. Now what we could do is we could actually put in instead of putting in plan here, we could say um, the checkbox one dot text. So we actually maybe want to do that instead of uh, writing in build. So checkbox two of text. And finally, checkbox three of text and checkbox four text. All right, so we have our label in here. We have plan, run, close. Now let's make sure on, on the on visible property of the form, what we actually want to do is we want to clear collect the collection lifecycle. That's our collection. And we want to collect the gal projects.selected.lifecycle. So now every time we visit the form, it collects what was already in there in the default property. So let's change it. Let's, um, in ABC development, let's add build and hit submit. And then when we go back to ABC development, you can see that build is now in there. So let's remove plan and hit submit. When we go back to ABC development, you can see that plan is unselected. And if we look at the SharePoint list, we can see that our, our combo box here, this is actually a combo box of, of choices, it's close and build. And we can select all three, hit submit, and go back in. We have all four selected. In our choice field with a refresh, we can see all four are selected. So that's how we would convert checkboxes into a multi-choice field. So I think that's really neat. We can now use checkboxes to you know, fill in one column instead of having four columns separated for each checkbox. If we look into it some more, each of the default properties are just finding if the checkbox one exists in the label here. And the label is just a concatenation of what's in this item uh, life cycle. We're just pulling in the value and adding commas. And so uh, what you could do to finalize this is just kind of go to the visible, go to the visible property of these two things and just change them to false. So the user will never even see them. So now in our projects, let's try one more in the life cycle. We can see that we have three selected. We can unselect plan, add build, hit submit. It saves. Re so in SharePoint right now, it's plan. We added build. We hit refresh. It's now run, close, and build. And in SharePoint, that is a multi-select choice field under life cycle here. So thank you for your question about how to, you know, convert checkboxes into a multi-select field. So I think this was a really neat, uh, neat question. I appreciate it. If you like this content, please like and subscribe and feel free to ask more questions. Thank you for watching.